Okay, for uh, those, of, those of you that, uh, you know, don't know me, I live in New York City, but I was born in France, actually in this small village, and I was raised in this farm. And as a designer, uh, I always felt that, uh, uh, you know, this uh, inspiration for what I did came from, you know, the place where I was, you know, brought up. And in I had a, a really good career. I work with major international uh, brands, and I thought that, you know, life was good and brands were good. And one morning I was looking, you know, uh, on my computer for some of the headlines, uh, and I saw the mayor of Sao Paulo bans all form of outdoor advertising in the city. And I, I said, I, I've got to go there. You know, I've got to go there, I've got to interview the mayor, I have to talk to the mayor, I have to find out you know, what's going on. So I called my daughter and I said, who is the director in LA, and I said, you're coming with me, we're going to film the mayor, you know, talking about why he kicked that brands out of the city. And she said, well, I don't know about that film, but I'll go to Brazil, to Brazil any time. And then we went, and I'm going to show you a really rough cut of uh, you know, what started to be a very long journey that took us to uh, 14 countries. Uh, we had more than 200 interviews, and it's turning out to be uh, a full feature documentary that would be released this year. <laughs> Cidade Limpa é uma iniciativa inteligentíssima e que teve uma relação contrária da cidade muito grande. All that information, all that paper, they broke in our walls, they broke in our houses, they broke in our cars. The clutter was so much and so intense that it was actually doing the city harm. Before you made that decision, did you do some research, you know, among the population to find out, you know, how prepared they were or if they were indeed interested, you know, to, uh, to have a cleaner city? Nós havíamos testado esse modelo de combate à poluição visual numa área mais restrita da cidade. E o resultado desse teste foi muito positivo para a comunidade da região, no centro de São Paulo, a mídia Ela, a imprensa repercutiu muito favoravelmente. There are various ways to reduce visual pollution. The, the choice of the prefeitura in São Paulo was a radical one. Mas eu acho que são iniciativas como essa que são fundamentais para a harmonia maior e uma agressão menor. Essa decisão não é que aproximou as pessoas, mas aproximou a população do poder público. Criou um clima mais, de mais confiança. Há muito tempo nós não víamos no Brasil, ou em nenhum estado, nenhum município, uma política pública tão radical e tão bem sucedida. All the people say it's very nice. How oh, good. I, I did not remember of this special build. What? There was a garden there. I don't remember this. So what we have here is this uh, extraordinary uh, you know decision by a mayor to you know take down all form of outdoor advertising. And it was radical and it happened in three months. And uh, when I went to interview the mayor, uh, what he told me is that uh, he considered that visual pollution was part of all the pollutions that uh, you know, existed on this planet and that he had to fight 
you know, visual pollution, you know, as, as much as all the other, you know, pollution. And he found out that uh, uh, he could, you know, bring the people of Sao Paulo behind a mission, behind a, uh, a reason, you know, also for them to endorse, you know, their city and to maybe love their city even more. So it was an incredible, you know, discovery for us. And certainly it was, uh, for me, a revelation. So the main message, you know, there was, is there now a conflict between city branding and brands? And indeed, there is a conflict because when you look at what's going on, you know, around the planet, it is really interesting to look at some of the data, like 100 cities now account for 30% of the world economy and all its innovation. Which means that cities at some point, you know, might be more powerful than countries and they are be going to become, you know, the centers of economies. Therefore, they will have to compete against each other and their success is going to be based on how much talent they're going to bring in. And so cities want to attract talent, you know, to be successful. And another data, which is really interesting, is that the proportion of the world population that will be living in city by 2040 will be 70%. And from, for the brands, it's a completely different thing because for them, it's like a lot of people in a small amount of space. And therefore, you know, they need to create more presence for their brands to two diverse, uh, you know, direction. And I think the mayor of Sao Paulo, you know, understood this because if you travel the world and you go from city to city, they all look the same. You know, brands tend to homogenize, you know, the places where we live in. And it's very difficult, you know, after a while to recognize even where you are. When indeed, uh, it is really important, you know, for, you know, for cities to create the environment that's going to make people come and stay. And then there is the ecological issue. We all know that digital billboards, you know, are, ca are capturing the attention of drivers and creating more accident. And we know that the carbon footprint of one digital billboard is equal to the carbon footprint of 13 houses in America. So cities need to be inspiring place. And cities need to encourage, you know, people to communicate, to come together and feel comfortable about their environment. After Sao Paulo, we went to Los Angeles and this is what happened. About 30 buildings were covered with vinyl, like entire buildings. And they did it illegally. It was not approved by the fire department. It was not approved, you know, by the police department. They did it in the middle of the night. Some people went to work, you know, one morning in one of those buildings and suddenly their view was blocked by a huge billboard. And not only that, but the trees that they were seeing outside of their windows had been cut out. So people that were driving on the freeway could see the billboard. The billboard company say, we don't care. Sue us. Take us to court. Because until they go to court, you know, they make the money. Carmen Tutanish, the district attorney for Los Angeles, when he was elected you know, recently, found on his desk 29 lawsuits by billboards company against the city to preserve their illegal billboards. This is, how this is how it works. There are 4,000 illegal billboards in uh, LA. In New York, they created this elevated, they, they created a garden, you know, on this elevated, you know, rail, you know abandoned uh, railway track. It's a beautiful garden. It's, it's just a piece of art, except that after walking, you know, a few meters, you see this huge billboard. 
And if, if you saw one, that would be fine, except that you see an another one. And this one uh, is, is kind of disturbing because this place really is for families and children. And so if your kid asks, you know, Dad, you know, what are those two people doing here? So you say, well, you know, ask your mom. Brands are trying to get our kids before we educate them. It's illegal to have this kind of billboard, you know, near to a park, but they do exist, and they're there. There are 1,000 illegal billboards in New York City. So are billboards, you know, killing the city? Well, if you go to Casablanca, you'll find out that around the, the Blue Mosque, which is one of the most beautiful pieces of architecture in the world, it's covered with digital billboards. If you go to Ljubljana in Slovenia, which is, you know, one of those like really small, teeny, absolutely gorgeous, you know, little place that had, has all the personality of a famous uh, local architect, you realize that the city is being destroyed by billboards. And then if you go to Mumbai, what you see is just, you know, the most incredible takeover of the city by the billboards company. Let's talk about Venice. How many of you love Venice, right? How many of you would love Venice with this huge advertisement? They are covering entire canals. And so what we found uh, in working with the film is that the billboard issue is one issue, but what we found a lot more interesting is that suddenly people are reacting. There is a revolt. You know, people want to push back. And we interviewed, you know, those people. We interviewed this woman in, uh, you know, in Mumbai that suddenly, uh, you know, like went after the city legally to preserve, you know, the environment. She could not understand why. You know, a building, an historical building like this, you know, would be transformed into this. In New York, there is this uh, uh, group called Public Ad Campaign that replaces illegal advertising with art. They call that city takeover, and they are doing it all around the world. So what they do, they invite like 80 to 90 artists to provide art that they will then you know, put on some of the billboard that they at first have repainted. Or they bring artists that perform in front of those repainted, you know, billboards. Do you know what happened? Some of them get arrested. So they get arrested because they're trying to fight something illegal. Except that the brands have made fighting brands illegal. And there's someone that we interviewed in the film that said that what's illegal is not to authorize the street artists to express themselves. Because their voice is being drawn by the commercial media. And what the commercial media wants is not to hear any other's voices artistic or not, that could be louder or that could be more pervasive than theirs because their ambition is to occupy, occupy you know, the landscape. Illegal billboards are not penalized. If you're caught in New York as a street artist, you get one year in jail. Brands don't get anything. No jail, no fines, business as usual. So I think it's time you know, to give our cities back to our children. And I think that the way to do this beyond billboards is to look at what other people have been doing, like Houston, for instance, that used to have 17,000 billboards, and suddenly the population rebelled and said, enough is enough, we don't want to do that anymore. They 
voted a law that kicked out, like in Sao Paulo, all the billboards outside of the, of the city and planted tens of thousands of trees instead. The result, most prestigious American companies have their headquarters in Houston. Retail sales went up 100% after they banned the billboard and a million people moved to Houston since the ban. So there is a, an economic model you know, in keeping, you know, your city clean. There's an area in France, you know, an industrial area in saint Nazaire where, uh, you know, people are working and it's a very industrial zone and, and it's surrounded by houses, you know, that where, where poor, poor people live. And so the mayor decided, you know, to, uh, you know, to do something about that place and give it a little bit of self-esteem because people are working there and people are living around there. And so he asked, you know, this artist, Felice, Varini, you know, to do a piece of art, you know, around, and what he did is like, he made like some interesting, you know, abstract shapes, you know, on different buildings, but when you go on top of a higher building, all those shapes come together as a piece of art. And thousands and ten thousands of visitors, you know, have been visiting this neighborhood. On the Champs-Élysées, because kids, you know, can't leave the city, you know, Paris has decided to bring an entire farm on the Champs-Élysées. So the kids, you know, to interface with nature. So imagine a world, you know, in nature. We know that certain kind of trees reduce crime. That research is telling us that. And that patients in hospital that can see trees, you know, through their windows get better faster than those who don't. So there's a reason to protect our environment. This is not the world we want to live in. This is the world that we want to bring you know, back. And when I was uh, in last October in Shanghai, which was you know, theme around the concept of better city, better life, I was like so you know, impressed by this idea of this vision of a city, of this grander city, which are the cities that we will have in the future, with farms in the middle of the cities. I think the cities of the future are going to be designed around food, around farms, because it's not going to be possible you know, to, uh, uh, you know, to carry food. It's going to be too expensive. And people will have to feed themselves you know, on location, and the cities are going to be so big that they will need to have this type of uh, infrastructure. Imagine Times Square, if suddenly nobody went there anymore. What we would have is those frames, you know, those like ugly LED frames because billboards don't have a legacy, like architecture, of leaving their mark on our civilization since they are destroying it. Alberto, Alberto Kassabi said, all forms of pollution are the same. Whether it's noise, air, water, they reflect the type of society that we have built. And so I really strongly believe that today a city identity will be defined by the responsibility that those cities will assume in preserving the quality of life for its citizens for today and future generation. And to brands, I want to say, my mind, I've not given it to you. Because brands consider us, human being, as commercial space. They consider us as private spaces. Just some kind of, you know, vague consumer type that are only there for the buying. And their goal is to get to our mind. Listen, I was consulting with a soft drink, you know, company one day, and I said you should paint, you know, the town, you know, where you know you have your headquarter, red. And everybody who runs around the room said, oh yeah, that's a great idea, you know, how we do this. That's how brands think. They don't think about the future and they don't think about, you know, our humanity. So our minds, I have not 
given it to you. And I want you to repeat that with me. Repeat after me, my mind. My mind. I have not given it to you. There is a movement that's getting started, and I think we all need to go out and then check every billboard and call the city and say, is it legal? Is, is, it, uh, is it normal that this thing is there on my park in front of my house? We have to push back you know, the commercial brand or they will destroy our cities. Thank you so much.